Hi, in this video, we will go through CCNP Service Provider 350501 SPCOR, implementing and operating Cisco Service Provider Network Core technologies. This exam tests your knowledge of implementing core service provider network technologies, including core architecture, services, networking, automation, quality of services, security, and network assurance. Let's look at question one. Which service is a VNF role? A VNF stands for Virtual Network Function. It is the virtual version of a hardware device's network function. We can quickly launch a new network function as a virtual machine or container without the hardware requirement. Some of the uh, examples of the Cisco VNFs are SAV, Next Generation Firewall, V, Virtualized, WSAV, ESAV, AMPV, they are virtualized. Or also we have a VH card and maybe some other uh, virtualized products or appliances. And firewall is the right one, the right role for the VNF. That's, that's it for question one. Question two, which description refers to segment routing prefix segments? So answer A, it is linked to a prefix SID that is globally unique within the segment routing domain. This is correct. Prefix SID is globally unique. And B, it is the longest path to the north. Now, it is the shortest. C, it is linked to an adjacency SID that is globally unique within the router. The adjacency SID is relative, is a relative term to a specific router. It is only locally unique, not globally. And D, it requires using EIGRP to operate now. OSPF or is this ISIS? So A is the correct answer for this one. Question C, three, sorry. How much must the MTU be increased when configuring the 802.1Q VLAN tag? So the original ethernet frame Let's say this is the free. And there are some other uh, fields in this uh, source address. And we have uh, Ethernet length and other stuff. And the original size of the frame is 1518 bytes. And the insertion will be in here. A tag. This is a tag. And then it's gonna become like this. It's still source address. And then there's a inserted tag and Ethernet or length or whatever is left. And it's gonna become 1522 bytes. So the insertion will be four bytes of the tag. So B is the right one. For this question. Question four. Which purpose of implementing NSF with this uh, configuration is true? Router OSPF1, NSF, IETF, restart, in interval 90. The NSF stands for non stop. Forwarding, which means 
the forwarding will be will not be stopped. It is to use to uh, minimize the amount of time a network is unavailable to its peers following a switch over. It is used to continue forwarding IP packets following a route processor switch over. So D is the right one. The router uses NSF to handle RP switch over while allowing neighbor relationships to main, remain up. And A and C has nothing to do with um, load balancing. And B, the router uses NSF to reduce neighbor relationship downtime during RP switch over. The NSF can, can reduce downtime during switch over as a result, but it's not the main purpose. So D is the correct answer. Question 5. Which configuration enables BGP full spec, client function, and installation of policies on all local interfaces? The BGP flow specification allows us to rapidly deploy and propagate filtering. And this is the typical configuration on iOS XR software. And so the correct configuration should be flow spec and address family IPv4, which is the same for all options. And then it should be local install interface all. So C is the right one. And also don't forget to commit to make all the previous configuration work. All right, so question six. Which utility must be used to locate MPLS faults? D, QRS? No. QRS quality of service can control the bandwidth, but it has nothing to do with the locating MPLS faults. It's not going to do that kind of work. B, EEM? It can track or monitor events and allow some automation of our previous works, previous designed works, but not like troubleshooting the uh, faults or MBRS faults. And C, the ping function, it can only check the LSP reachability, but it cannot reveal the location of the faults or the LSP path. Only A can do that work because MPRS uh, trace route props every router on the LSP path with incrementing TTL values. So this is um, the correct one we're going to use to locate the MPRS faults. That's it for question six. And question seven, a customer of an ISP requests support to set up a BGP routing policy, which BGP attribute should be configured to choose specific BGP speakers as preferred exit points for the customer AS? So by the information given, we're going to make it more understandable by drawing a very simple diagram or topology. This is the customer AS. For example, we have it here, and we have a service provider, SP, uh, which is a P router, and by what's given, we have a couple of uh, exit points, and they all connect to the SP router. So basically, this is asking us to compare the best BGP exit within the same AS. And we, kn we all know about the BGP 13 route selection rule. And the first rule is weight. The second one is uh, local preference, which is bigger, the better. And we can use the local preference to do this job. We can increase the local preference to the highest value, for example, we choose this exit and we can 
we can configure the local preference to the highest value on this route and it's gonna go to this exit point to the outbound direction eventually to the destination ISP router by increasing this uh, LP to the highest value and A is the right one highest local preference outbound and this is wrong this is not right and lowest MED the MED is the exchange between different AS it's not in this case especially A is A can do this job so question eight a router RP route processor is configured to perform MPLS LDP grid force restart which three steps are included when the RP sends an LDP initialization message to a neighbor to establish an LDP session? We need to choose three answers. A raw processor sends the LDP initialization message to a neighbor to establish an LDP session. The fault tolerant session TLV includes the three steps information the first one is a reconnect timeout field the second one is a re uh, recovery timeout time field and one extra is a learn from network flag set to one so those three are the are the correct answers we're looking for for this question ADE and question 9 which task must be performed first to implement BFD in an ISIS environment so to implement BFD with uh, ISIS we need to configure the configure the BFD under ISIS process for example we can do like router as is, let's give it number one and we can do BFD all interface under the as uh, process and then we can um, a enable or disable the BFD feature under any specific interface and so B is the right one and D is the following step not the first and C configure all as as routers as a level 2 devices um, it has nothing to do with a level 1 or level 2 devices and A disabling CF is not relevant so for this one we choose uh, answer B Question 10. Which QoS model allows hosts to report their QoS needs to the network? So the QoS model, uh, we have three, three, and the first one is the best effort services, which means it's going to give full power. It's going to transfer everything without limit without restrictions without second thoughts and the second one we have a in integrated service which is a int surf and we have a differentiated okay Service or div serve for short, and the int serve uses the RSVP to signal explicitly the QoS needs of an application's traffic to indicate that they require special QoS treatment. So, answer D is the right one. Also, differentiated services focus on aggregated and provisioned QoS. 
MQC, Model QS CRI is only one method of applying QS. It's not a model. This one the same. CBWFQ is not a QS model. So D is the answer we're looking for for question 10. Why choose Spoto? Founded in 2003, Spoto is an outstanding online IT training institute for 17 years. We offer 100% real and verified Cisco CCNA, CCMP, CCIE Lab, PMP, AWS, CISM, CISA, Huawei, and other IT exam practice tests and study materials to help thousands of candidates around the world to pass their IT exams on the first try. Our Spoto products has many advantages. 100% real exam answers and questions. 100% pass guaranteed. Real simulated exam environment. Free update for dump stability. Less questions with highest accuracy. Latest passing report feedback. 724 technical and professional tutors support. With expertise and strength, Spoto has made cooperation with Cisco, Huawei, Starnet, and other well-known network equipment suppliers and system integrator at home and abroad. Also, Spoto has close cooperation with Tencent.com, one of the IT giants in China and verified as the official IT certification training institute by Tencent Cross. If you want to get the latest news of your training courses and IT certification products, you can visit our official website www.spotodumps.com, www.spotoclub.com, www.ccie.spoto.net or you can search Spoto, S-P-O-T-O, -O, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to subscribe our channel to get the information.